All right, Trevor, all this excitement and energy going into the week of Army. BYU gets ranked, and then uh, it's postponed because of uh, COVID-19. What's your reaction to BYU postponing the game with Army? Uh, I was disappointed. I mean, it was their chance to follow up that great Navy win with a potential win over a ranked team. And BYU this year has a chance for this season to be really special. And to face a ranked team in their second game on national television would have been awesome. But they did the right thing by at least postponing it. The, the last opportunity they'll have to play it, or the next one, I think, maybe the only, is at the end of November. The hope is that both BYU and Army will still be doing well enough that they'll both be ranked at that time. And if that's the case, then Army will want to reschedule. And so will BYU and play that game at the end of November because that would put both teams in a position to be able to have a late win over a ranked opponent. So uh, this game I don't think is over yet, but it's disappointing that we're not going to get to see it this week. It's really hard because BYU jumps into the rankings, so do Army in these adjusted top 25 rankings of the teams that are playing. And the opportunity was there, like you said, it's two ranked teams, and it's not just that. It's national TV on CBS. Who knows how good these teams will be later, but both are at least perceived to be good right now. This is a blown opportunity. So what do you see BYU being able to do, I guess, in terms of trying to make this up? If they can't make that game up, how does BYU make up for the inability to play Army if they cannot later? Well, Jeremy, it's got to be something to the effect of what happened with Houston and Baylor this week. I mean, both Baylor and Houston had their upcoming opponents have to cancel because of COVID. So they said, hey, we're right up the road. Let's schedule each other. And in six days before kickoff, they went ahead and put together a college football game. And that's the kind of thing that will need to happen. Complication for BYU is that they can't drive up the road to any place. They've got to fly to where they've got to go. And the Power of Five conferences that are still playing are either not playing non-conference, and so it's unlikely that they would make up a miss, like in the SEC, a missed conference game with a non-conference opponent, although it's possible, or they're only playing one non-conference opponent. But in the group of five, there are still possibilities. Take a look at what the Sun Belt did last week. Three Sun Belt teams spanked and defeated favored Big 12 teams, right? So the Sun Belt is out there, and maybe if the Sun Belt or the American loses games, over the course of the season, BYU might be an, uh, an opponent to make up that game and to get something on TV. So it is possible that as the season goes on, COVID took away this Army game or at least postponed it. It might give back to BYU another game. And it could be a game against a highly ranked team because both the Sun Belt and the American have a bunch of ranked teams right now. It's pretty interesting. And you look at what the Sun Belt did. They beat three Big 12 teams, like you said, over the weekend. BYU has two Sunbelt teams on the schedule, including Troy and Texas State, so that should be interesting. What did you think of BYU jumping into the top 25? Deserved after the Navy uh, win? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everybody's talking about BYU and how physical they were. I mean, jaded college football analysts and play-by-play -play guys have reached out to me and told me how impressed they were with the way BYU played. I mean, old-school, smash-mouth football. And that was against a good Navy team. And I, I think it's fair to bring up that Navy didn't hit a lot during their preparation leading up to that season opener. But it's unfair to say that that's why the game turned out the way it did. I think that may have put Navy a bit behind the eight ball, but BYU just smashed them in the mouth. And that's a Navy team that has been expected and is still expected, in my opinion, to contend for the American Conference title. So BYU in doing that just was impressive to people that aren't easily impressed. And even if Navy had fully contacted and practiced and tackled, that would not have made a 52-point difference, let's be honest. And I was excited, Trevor, about the matchup with Army because I thought BYU played Navy as well as anyone's ever played them in defending the option, and I thought BYU was going to win that game and perhaps win it sizably and then go into Troy with a lot of momentum. But here we are. So let's look at BYU's season as a whole. Seven games on the schedule currently. They're trying to reschedule Army. In order for BYU to pursue, quote, a special season, do they need to add more games? Because I feel like they do, because obviously quality is an issue with this schedule. But quantity, if you have fewer games than everyone else, that's going to be against BYU in a conversation late in the season. Yeah, I don't think it'll hurt them when it comes to bowl games, unless they drop below maybe six. But when it comes to the potential for what would make this a special season externally, which would be 
get into a, a New Year's Six Bowl game. They would need to schedule some more teams. They would need to schedule somebody who's ranked. They'd have to have a victory over a team that ends the season ranked, hopefully, and they'd have to have more than seven games. And that is on the table. All of those things could happen. BYU, I think we don't want to crown them national champions just yet. There's some things they need to work on. But it's so promising and encouraging right now that this team, especially with the Pac-12 and the Big Ten not playing, at least not as of yet, this team could get into a New Year's Six Bowl. In order to do so, though, again, they'd have to they'd have to make up that Army game, either against Army or somebody else, and hopefully add another game or two. And then they'd have to sweep it. But if they did that, that's the definition of a special season. Externally, internally, I think that they don't have to go to a New Year's Six Bowl in order to be seen as having a special season. Internally, I think this team has already done a lot of great things just to get to this point, just to start the opener the way it's been, just to show what they're capable of. And now all they can do is attack each week that is in front of them. And they should not be judged for how the weeks in front of them play out, except for how they play on the field. Talking with former Cougar, national champion, NFL player, and ESPN's Trevor Maddox. Trevor, I noticed you went with the uh, Johnny Cash look. I know you're in Nashville, so that would be appropriate, right? Yes, sir. That's exactly right. You know, and as long as, you know, I, the, Johnny Cash or Jerry Glanville. Keep in mind <laughs> nice. that Jerry Glanville, coach of the, yeah, he always left tickets for Atlanta Falcons games for Elvis in case he left. Now, I think Elvis would want to bring Jim Morrison with him because, you know, obviously he's hanging out with Jim somewhere. Bring him but, all. Uh, yeah, bring Chris I, Farley. Bring him I, all. I, I, yeah, it's uh, slimming. <laughs> you look great. BYU has, as we mentioned, seven games on the schedule now, hoping for eight with Army. They only play one game in November. Tom Homo did tweet that BYU could be in a position to be a team that helps get a rescheduled game from a team that – couldn't make it up, but BYU is available. Do you expect BYU to have more than one game in November? I do. I do because there's so much that we can't really anticipate right now, but we can see what's happened recently to kind of figure that there are possibilities. Go back to the first week of the Major League Baseball season where the Miami Marlins were, they, they were decimated by COVID in their clubhouse. Their opener was against the Philadelphia Phillies. Well, the, the next opponents to the Marlins and the Phillies were the Yankees and the Orioles. Marlins and the Phillies had to step out for that next week. So the Yankees and the Orioles said, hey, well, then let's just play each other. That's what happened in college football with Houston and Baylor. And those kinds of things can pop up for BYU. Keep in mind that right now already, conferences are planning for some of their teams not being able to finish the season. The ACC has already announced that if eight teams are still playing, they will continue to play as a conference. Well, there's 15 teams, including Notre Dame, in the ACC, and they're already anticipating that as many as seven of those might have to eventually drop the season. But if eight still go, they're going to be okay. And because of that, you don't just lose teams in a conference. You lose scheduled games, and those scheduled games can be made up by scheduling BYU in November. Talking to Trevor Manich of ESPN. Trevor, uh, I want to ask you about Cougars in the NFL in a moment, but uh, what did you think of week two where we had some Power 5 teams come in? We saw Clemson, Oklahoma, Notre Dame play. What stuck out? What stuck out was how unexpected everything was. I mean, the biggest un unexpected thing for a lot of people was Louisiana of the Sun Belt going up and spanking ranked Iowa State of the Big 12 at Iowa State. That was a big deal, but when you looked at the way they played, there were a lot of similarities to the BYU-Navy game. BYU was better prepared to play that over the Navy, and so was Louisiana to Iowa State. And you could see that especially on special teams where there were two returns for a touchdown. One was a punt return for a touchdown by Louisiana. And what happened was the Iowa State cover guys all kind of got behind each other all in a column. And you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to spread out into lanes. But early in the season, you get buck fever and all you see is the returner. You don't see your teammate right in front of you that you're not supposed to be following down the field. And so you're just running down, trying to make that tackle. You're all fired up. And the next thing you know, four guys are in one lane. Nobody's in that lane. It's the touchdown. Well, a lot of that happened in different ways over the course of the opener, North Carolina, which I think is going to have one of the most explosive passing offenses in the nation didn't pass the ball, ball very well in the opener against Syracuse. A lot of things happened that we weren't sure about. Some things happened that we would think. Spencer Rattler 
is the new starting quarterback at Oklahoma. Now, they just played Missouri State, no disrespect, but the ball came out of his hand like he's an NFL quarterback. I mean, there's a lot of reason for optimism at Oklahoma about Spencer Rattler. Texas, with Sam Ellinger at quarterback, came back for his senior season. I don't trust any quarterback in all of college football more than I trust Ellinger to lead his team and to carry them on his back on the field. So there were some things that happened that were unexpected that we couldn't anticipate, but some of the things, especially with some of the best players, happened like we thought, and it'll be interesting to see them go forward. It was a fun day. I watched a lot of college football and the NFL, which brings me to this, and let's finish with this. Cougars in the NFL, eight guys in action for BYU, Thursday with Daniel Sorensen, seven yesterday. Who had the best performance in your opinion? You know, there's two guys that stood out to me for reasons that may be different from the stat sheet. One of them is Fred Warner. He was named team captain of the 49ers. This team was in the Super Bowl last year. They'll be a Super Bowl contender for years to come, and, and they chose Fred Warner of BYU to be one of their team captains, team leaders. I think that says a lot about Fred, says a lot about the character of the kind of guys that BYU recruits and develops. And the other one is Taysom Hill. The Saints beat uh, Tom Brady's Buccaneers, and Taysom had a really fun Taysom day. He threw a pass for 38 yards. He caught a pass for 14 yards. He had three carries on the ground. He had a lot of fun. But every time the camera was on him, Taysom had this massive smile on his face. He's got this childlike joy of playing the game and of being around his teammates. And at a time when there is so much acrimony surrounding sports because of things that have nothing to do with what actually happens on the field during the game, it's so refreshing to see a guy like Taysom Hill that is having such joy in what happens on the field in the game. He's got that new dad strength as well, which is awesome. Some people call you Jerry Glanville, like you said. Others call you Johnny Cash. I call you team manager. Mm. Trevor, thanks for the time. Thank you, John. Trevor Maddich in the ring of fire on the Deseret First Credit <laughs> Union hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how. When we